Oh boy, do we have a big video today for all Tesla stock investors, including China's vehicle registration numbers, which came in today as a big disappointment on a year over year basis, down about 50%. I think there's a red line here that we can draw, and it has to do with the Model 3 Highland. You guys really need to hear this. We also have Kathy Woods reiterating her bull thesis on Tesla stock, saying that Tesla is going to be the winner that takes most most in the robo taxi sector you also need to hear that one we have the uaw sean fain the president of the uaw calling on more local plants to strike by this friday if a deal is not reached or at least seeing significant progress towards reaching a deal and on top of that we have some interesting hedging happening with tesla stock it really makes you wonder if someone somewhere knows something with 36 percent of the option activity being bullish the other 63 percent being bearish heading into tomorrow's fed meeting uh, that doesn't look so great. We're going to go ahead and give you the latest, and that is only the tip of the iceberg. So I hope you are ready for a jam-packed video. If you are not, then click off right now. This is not the channel for you. But if you are an investor in Tesla stock, if you like Tesla stock, if you like to stay up to date with what's going on with the broader markets, as well as, you guessed it, Tesla stock, well, hit that like button. Let us know you are invested, as well as subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of this information each and every single day. So so the first thing that we're going to cover is the China vehicle registration numbers. Now, this is seen as a disappointment to a lot of individuals. This is the lowest number that we have seen since the week of July 17th through the 23rd of July. The number came in at 8,500. Now, the reason why this is so low is simply the Model 3 Highland is being ramped and is about to launch. Now, a lot of people are confused by this. Hasn't the Highland been being sold in China this whole time? Well, actually, no. Tesla has been producing the Highland in Shanghai, but they only recently just got the permits to actually sell this vehicle in China. So that was within the last couple of days or so, and we talked about it here on the channel. So I would imagine pretty shortly, you're going to start getting deliveries of the Highland. We've seen pictures and videos of Highlands being loaded on what looks to be just trailers for local delivery, not getting exported onto a ship to Europe and to other countries. So that's the reason I would imagine these numbers are down 50% year over year or close to 50%. Last year's Vehicle registration numbers for this week, for the 37th week of the year, was 15,856. Dramatically lower than today's number of 8,500. It has to do with the Model 3. This is actually great news because the price of the Model 3 in China went up about 12%. So the margin should be pretty good. And overall, the money Tesla brings in from that should counteract any weakness that we might see for this week or even what we've seen for the past couple of weeks on a year over year basis. You've, you've kind of been getting disappointed on a year over year basis if you look at these last couple of weeks. We also have some really good news. The Model x delivery time has now been pushed out to november through december before the price cut you were looking at september through october and then as of september 7th it went from october to november and now as of today it went from november to december this shows that you're probably getting some really good demand for the Model X and there's just not enough Model X's in inventory to meet all of this demand. So they have to start cranking up production again for the Model X. This is a higher margin product from Tesla. So it should be good for Tesla's earnings this quarter a little bit heading into really the fourth quarter. Tesla's Model 3 Highland arrives in Italy's showrooms, and this arrived today, September 19th of 2023. Deliveries for the refreshed Tesla Model 3 are expected to start next month in Italy. 
The Tesla Model 3 Highland rear wheel drive variant in Italy cost $45,472.37. These are in US dollars before options. The Model 3 Highland long range starts at $53,498. The tow hitch with towing capacity of uh, 2,200 pounds costs an additional $1,400. So we can expect likely similar pricing here in the U.S. as well. Although you can't place a pre-order yet here in the U.S. for the Highland, we can only go off of pricing we're seeing for other countries. So this would be quite the jump from the current price of the Model 3, which again, should be good for Tesla's earnings. Kathy Woods went on CNBC to reiterate her bull thesis for Tesla stock, and we're gonna go ahead and give this a, a listen. We're gonna stay here together. It is one minute, 14 seconds long. So let's go ahead and play little old Kathy Woods. Gotta love some Kathy here in the afternoon. Well, about a third of our valuation is associated with electric vehicles, EVs, and scaling them. And as, uh, as you mentioned, Turkey, a plant there, uh, you know, many countries do want uh, a Tesla plant because is, this is the new world, right? Uh, so that's good. This is all working out. And then the then two thirds of our valuation is around autonomous and uh, autonomous taxi platforms. Uh, we think Tesla is in the pole position here in the United States. It has collected more data about our roads and actually other roads around the world uh, than all of the other uh, companies combined. And therefore, it has more corner cases and probably will be the company that will get people from point A to point B as quickly and safely as possible. So it's a winner take most market. Uh, so whether it's our base case, uh, it just, that just means, okay, autonomous, uh, perhaps takes a little longer to play out. Uh, or the bull case, it happens much more quickly. I think we'll take the bull case any day, but either way, Tesla has some massive returns in the future. If you guys have not seen the video that I put out, uh, the thumbnail on it, probably the best way to describe it, says $9,555 for Tesla's share price. That's essentially what Elon suggested Tesla could reach if we get to one trillion in net profits at any point in the future with a 30 times PE, that would be a $30 trillion market cap for Tesla. That would be a 35 X from here. Watch that video. If you have not already, we broke down the math and uh, even Kathy Wood, her price targets could be conservative if you're looking out the next 10 years or so. Tesla's Google Trends data looks very good as well. You are coming off of this uptick in Google Trends activity, but you're still at very elevated levels. For the Model 3, you're still sitting at a search term of 80. For the Model X, you're at 37. For the Model Y, at 51. And the Tesla Model S at 28. Eight. These are some very good numbers, even relative to where Tesla is usually at. And it, again, it looks like the Model 3 is uh, really seeing a lot of search activity relative to the other models. But I like to point this out in relation to the news that we just went over, how the Model 3 delivery times get, keep getting pushed out. You're actually seeing this in real time with the Google Trends data. So it looks like the deliveries should be really good. And we should be getting that here in just the next two weeks or so, the delivery numbers for Q3. And that's going to be another potential potentially big catalyst for Tesla stock. The UAW president, Sean Fain, has announced that if Ford, GM, and Stellantis don't make serious progress on upping their offers by this Friday, more UAW members will be called on to strike. Quote, either the big three get down to business or more locals will be called on to strike. And there's actually news that up to 12 different factories will be called on to strike at the same time by this Friday. This is really having negative impacts on the economy. 
Take a look at this news. It says the first auto supplier plans layoffs related to the UAW strike. A Michigan contract manufacturing supplier is planning to lay off 293 employees due to the UAW strike against the Detroit three automakers. This is in the Shiawassee and Lapeer County area. This is actually pretty dang close to where I live personally, just maybe like 100 miles away, 50 miles away, something like that. It's it's not that far away, so it's really starting to hurt the local economy here in Michigan quite a bit, and that's going to take a toll on the rest of essentially America as well. The longer this plays out, the harder this upcoming recession is going to be. It's no surprise we're heading into recession, but if you keep getting layoffs like this, you're going to be in for quite the problem towards the end of this year into the holiday shopping season. To make matters worse for the big three, Canada's Unifor Auto Workers Union is set to go on strike against Ford tonight for the first time in 32 years. This will be a total strike. All 5,600 Ford workers in Canada will go on strike. This means Ford would be would face strikes in the U.S. and Canada at the same time. Unifor's contract with Ford ends tonight at 11.59 p.m. As Gene Munster says, my updated math suggests Tesla's labor cost will be 48% lower than the big three after they come to terms with the UAW and after Tesla's employees get a 15% bump, likely in the next six months. This is all around bad news for especially Ford, but also GM and Stellantis. At the same time, Hyundai Motors South Korea Union accepts only a 12% wage hike deal. Looks like out of any union out there, Honda is uh, definitely the one that is winning here. And really, these union contracts are going to make it so that if you get a, the best contract like a Honda compared to a Ford or GM or Stellantis, well, Honda might be the one that could actually compete for electric vehicles. For GM and Stellantis, they're not going to be able to compete. They might go bankrupt if they are forced to pay their workers. It's like almost $200 an hour, including pensions, health care, and hourly wages after this next union contract. Honda this union deal represents 44,000 members. This is quite a big union. And Honda looks like the clear winner out of unionized legacy OEMs. Volvo to end diesel car production by early 2024 as they head towards becoming an all-electric car maker. Quote, in a few months from now, the last diesel-powered Volvo car will be will have been built, making Volvo cars one of the first legacy car makers to take this step, the Swedish company said in a statement today. A new study reveals living in a colder climate may be better for your Tesla battery health. That is quite the contrary argument that a lot of people have made recently. It says for specifically two reasons, the sheer number of them on the road and also because of their advanced battery thermal management systems. It found that Tesla's operated in cold and marine climate zones generally exhibit higher range scores compared to those in hot climate zones. And this is actually a chart in which you can see for 2020 model Ys, and it looks like if you're in the blue states, you had a higher range score. If you were in the red states, you had a lower range score, and the red states tend to have the most Teslas out on the road. A large part of uh, California, as well as Florida, Texas, your top three states for Tesla vehicles out on the road tend to have the lowest range score which I find very interesting. The Nikola CEO just said today, quote, General Motors viewed Tesla in 2019 as a bunch of engineers playing with laptop batteries. That was conventional wisdom at the time. And we now know that turned out, know how that turned out, he continued. Tesla got a 10-year jump start on the entire industry. Yeah, and you can see everyone's trying to play catch up and scaling electric vehicles is a very hard thing to do. Tesla was unprofitable from the company's inception back in 06 
until 2020. And then they were only profitable because of the tax credits, right? That Tesla was, was able to sell to other OEMs. Well, Tesla didn't actually turn a profit until 2021 when you factor out those tax credits. So you had a period of, what, 16 years that Tesla was unprofitable on selling electric vehicles by themselves. Tax credits excluded. How long do you think it's going to take General Motors, Ford, Stellantis, these other companies to actually turn a profit? It took Tesla 16 years. Add on these UAW contracts, there is really just no competition for Tesla. And I also want to point out while I'm on this topic, these UAW contracts, either way you put it, is going to force Ford and GM to raise their prices. Now, does Tesla follow suit? And does Tesla raise their prices a little bit and up their margins? Or does Tesla keep prices the same or even be able to drop prices? You could very soon in the next year or so have a huge gap in price differences between Ford and GM vehicles and Tesla vehicles, making Tesla vehicles the obvious choice for even more consumers. Here's a video the Tesla Bears or Dan O'Dowd FSD well known bear, like literally trying to get it banned. Well, this is a video you will not see from any of them. Where, as Tesla Economics says, Tesla FSD will save your life. Point blank, period. Take a look at this. This is actually incredible. Look at that. Get out of here. The fact the car can make a judgment to not only look at its side, right, the side view, make sure it's not going to drive into another car, but also make sure there's no pedestrians on the road. At the same time, it takes a precise measurement to avoid this car and only swerve as much as it needs to. Take a look at the gap it left there. That is just fine engineering of full self-driving from Tesla. That's absolutely incredible. Toyota says it believes it can close the gap with Tesla and others by combining new technology with the famous lean production methods it has used for decades to wiring inefficiency, including excess cost, out of manufacturing. Last week, the company showed off a prototype of the die casting technology known as gigacasting that Tesla pioneered. And they said they won't even be using this technology until 2026. Tesla's already working on the next gen die casting technology, which is essentially creating the whole frame for a Tesla vehicle in one big stamp, taking out around 400 different parts that kind of need to be welded together to actually make the vehicle. This is one of the reasons why Tesla vehicles are so much safer than a lot of your other vehicles out on the road. It's the way Teslas are manufactured with a lot fewer parts and more just one complete solid part compared to other OEMs out there or even other EVs out there on the road today. All I have to say is good luck, Toyota. Tesla North America posted this on their X account. All Hertz rentals in the U.S. now allow full Tesla app access. This means you can use keyless lock slash unlock via a phone key, remotely precondition the cabin, track charge status, and more. This is going to make the rental experience with a Hertz Tesla or likely other rental companies Teslas a lot more appealing give you that full immersive experience and I think this could ultimately lead to more people buying Teslas if people like their experience in a Hertz and they see this cool technology that's got to be a good thing for Tesla right I would think so now let's talk about this I find this very interesting. Tesla stock is up about half of 1% today. You're heading into the Fed meeting coming tomorrow and take a look at the option activity. You have seen 481 orders totaling $267.74 million. So almost $270 million worth of options flowing into Tesla today with a positive order value of 36%. Over the past week, you have seen $3 billion go into Tesla options with a positive order value of 64%. So although Tesla's stock is green today by about a half of 1%, you're actually seeing quite a bit of puts being bought on Tesla. And these look like shorter term trades. These look like hedged trades to me. Now, this could also be individuals selling calls. There's two forms of kind of hedging of positions. There is selling calls 
and buying puts. Those are bearish option strategies. Your bullish option strategies would be selling puts or buying calls. So it looks like the the bearish hedges are uh, a lot greater than the long bets on Tesla stock today. And that makes sense heading into Fed Jerome Powell tomorrow because that's going to be a major event for the markets. 10-year Treasury yields are up 3.5 basis points today, sitting at 4.35%, the highest point that you have seen in this entire rate hike cycle so far. And the 2-year Treasury yields, same story here, at the highest level they have been at in this hiking cycle at almost 5.10%, up about three basis points on the day today. If you take a look at your yield curve inversion on the 10 and the 2 year. It's actually inverting a little bit more today, which is actually pretty good. When you, when you get the uninversion, when you're inverted and you start to go up on this chart, that's where markets tend to actually sell off the most. Now, what I like to look at personally is the 10 and three month yield curve inversion, and that is not steepening today. It's staying unchanged from what we've seen over the past couple of days, inverted 1.23%. If the 10 and the three month yield curve inversion continue to uninvert, that's going to be a pretty negative sign for the markets. And that uninversion could actually really get moving coming tomorrow if the fed does indicate any near-term change in fed policy the three-month bond would be impacted quite a bit as well as the two-year bond these are the two bonds that are very sensitive to fed policy so if the fed does indicate that maybe they're going to cut rates sooner than we think then that could cause the two-year treasury and the three-month treasury to fall thus helping to uninvert the yield curve inversion, which is historically when the markets do tend to fall. Now, Tesla's stock at the time of recording this video is up $2.10, up 0.8% here on the day. If we take a look at Tesla on the technical basis, the MACD is one of the strongest technical factors that we have going for us. Like I've said in many videos before, when you are negative on the MACD and you go positive, you tend to go positive to about 17. You're positive two on the MACD. This would suggest Tesla has one heck of a rally to go before you really start to see some downside pressure on some of these technical indicators so could be some good things to come if you like to pay attention to the MACD that is what it is telling you now the RSI is pretty neutral at 56.54 um, definitely towards the higher end range you're not quite at 50 which is the technical neutral level but you're neither oversold you're neither overbought at this moment in time the biggest moving average that you need to be watching is the eight day moving average at $267.98 per share. Tesla stock is really fighting here. That is the eight day moving average. Tesla stock at $267.40 per share. And that eight day moving average just switched to $268 even. So you're about 65 cents under that right now. If we can close above that heading into tomorrow, uh, that's going to look pretty dang good. It looks like we found support pretty heavily around 265. That's also another positive. You can see the low wick here for the day today hitting as low as $261. Now, if we do get downside because of the Fed or any other reason, uh, $256.20 is that first level I would be watching. That's the 50-day moving average. If things were to get bad from there, if the Fed really shocks markets, then uh, $200. $35.53 is the next big level to be watching for. That is the 100-day moving, moving average. And if things got really bad, if we've seen a full-on correction in the markets, your 200-day moving average would be the next level of major support. You'd basically fill the whole gap up that we have seen in essentially 2023. Sure, you would have you know, held some gains from the lows, but we were artificially low. Uh, that would be at $203. That would be some pretty substantial downside from here. I don't expect that, again, unless the markets were really shocked by what the Fed had to say. And we're going to break down really what you need to know. There's, there's, there's two outcomes to tomorrow. It could be really good. It could be really bad. I doubt we have a neutral reaction in the markets. And I want to break that down for you guys in the next video.
So I hope you're ready for that. That comes out at 9 p.m. tonight. Be ready for it. And just in case you're kind of unfamiliar on my stance here, you might want to have some hedges on your portfolio heading into tomorrow. The risk to reward does not look very optimal for an a big upside move in the markets coming after the Fed. So with that being said, if you guys want to come hedge out your portfolios, if you want to come trade with us live in real time, link down below in the description of this video. Like the video if you made it to the end, as well as comment down below. What are your opinions on the Fed tomorrow? What is your opinions on the hedges you're seeing in Tesla? Let me know what you guys think about all of this down below in the comment section. My name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.